Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brendan Hauser with Evoke Bike. So I had a good question come in that we could label this under CAF or questions, but I think it's a good topic to talk about because it is one that does come up quite often of how hard should we ride at endurance pace, but also when should we use heart rate and a little bit of a conversation about aerobic decoupling. If you're not familiar with aerobic decoupling, that's where when you look at a steady effort, how the heart rate moves compared to the consistent wattage put out and this athlete had reached out and we he had started the conversation about long weekend zone two rides and he had said in a three-hour ride given different things like the amount of rest or temperature the same ride on a different day could be 10 beats per minute higher than it was on the other ride my main question is even if the perceived exertion is similar physiologically, does it make more sense to shoot for heart rate instead of power? And then part two of my question is, what about shooting for different targets within the same zone, like low zone two or high zone two? When do you know which one to do? So I really like this because he's focused on not going too hard and also trying to ride hard enough that he gets the aerobic stimulus that his body needs. So this is definitely... I shouldn't say topic of contention, but there's different camps in this. And some people will shoot more for heart rate. But my biggest issue with that is just like this athlete said, so many things can affect your heart rate. The amount of sleep that you got, if you drank caffeine in the morning, life stress, temperature is a huge one. And so if those things are affecting heart rate, do we and should we change the workout? I really think in this context, use, and he actually uses this term, rate of perceived exertion, right? If you're going out for an endurance ride, you should not be gritting your teeth and slugging it out to hit zone two. If you are, we're going too hard, right? We need to dial it back in those instances. If the heart rate is 10 beats per minute higher, but it's hotter out that day, or you didn't sleep that well, and you're on a long bike ride, but you feel okay, you're like, hey, I'm riding zone two, just keep pedaling. I don't see a problem with that. Now, when he's talking about different targets within the same zone, again, I think it's really the same thing. And we had a, a conversation about this once in our open forum. If you're dying and really trying hard to hit 75% because that's the upper end of the zone and you're going to get it, it's just too hard that day. Chill out, ride at 65%, ride at 67%, ride at, look at your heart rate in this instance. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm definitely trying too hard. My heart rate's in zone three. It feels hard. Let me dial it back a little bit. And maybe your heart rate stays a little bit higher, but you feel like, hey, I'm, I'm going well. I can do this for three, four or five hours. As we all get more and more experience, this type of dialing in the training just gets better and better and better. Some days endurance feels hard. You go a little bit easier. That's okay. And I, you know, for context, if you don't, if you're not familiar with this, so my numbers are a little bit skewed. So I'm a bigger dude and have a bigger FTP. But if I'm normally shooting for like 280, if I have a day where it's 30 watts less and I'm around 250, and that's what feels like endurance, that's what I'm going to ride. You know. So don't overthink it. Getting those continuous muscle contractions and pedaling. That is crucial. Just stay consistent with that. The other thing that's interesting is when I'm super fresh, I know my heart rate is going to be higher, whether it's zone two, but especially for hard efforts. So as I get fitter, the more I ride, the heart rate drops a bit and is more stable across these zone two rides. So if I go do some zone four or five workouts, it's not going to skyrocket. And to me, that is good. I don't want my heart beating out of my chest, but I'll have athletes that get fit, get fit, get fit, do all this aerobic training. And then they go to go hard. They go, well, my heart rate won't get up. Do you think I'm tired? And I said, well, this is where rate of perceived exertion also comes in. Do you feel tired? <laughs> like You tell me, are you, are you tired? I cannot tell all the time if you're quote unquote tired based on what training peaks and WKO and any software is going to tell me, right? There's, there's many different layers of being tired and being fatigued, sleep, 
stress, all the things that we've been talking about. But plus, okay, yeah, if you're a negative 50 TSB, I'm going to say, hey, you might be a little tired. Or if I zoom out and look back and say, hey, you crushed six workouts this block, you've been training for 20 days, you're probably a little tired. But if you have that internal feeling and internal gauge of, oh, damn, I'm a little tired today, I'm going to dial it back. Don't overthink this. Take away the power beater. Take away the heart rate monitor. How do you feel? We are really, I shouldn't say we. It is very easy to get away from this. And there's just so much paralysis from over analysis. Be consistent. Ride your bike. Don't ride too hard. And when you go hard, go really ham. Tap into you as the athlete. It is so crucial. I don't care if you have the best coach in the world. They're not going to be able to tell you everything. And that's why when you listen to more and more podcasts about these world tour, super high level professional athletes, which many of us are not, when their coaches talk about their training, you can get the sense or they straight up say it. There's this hand, hands off effect where the athlete is the one running the ship. The coach is there as a consultant to help them, but they have to tap into how the athlete is feeling. That does trickle down to us amateurs. We need to be in touch with how we feel. When an athlete comes to me, when we're changing up the schedule, usually the first question is, how do you feel right now? <laughs> that is so important. Maybe they didn't put it in the comment box after their workout. Maybe they haven't, maybe they've been commenting less and that's usually a sign that something's going on. Be in touch with yourself, not to get too like meta or whatever the term is, but it's really important. So use RPE when needed. Use the metrics though, use heart rate, use power, use all of them to paint the full picture of how you're feeling. And then that will be your gauge as to how hard you should go within each session. Hopefully this helps you out. Good luck with your training. Hit us up on the blog, hit us up at email. Uh, please like, subscribe, do all the things for the algorithms. It helps us out with all this free content that we're putting out. We're going to st still keep cranking. Hopefully we can all have the best 2023 that we've ever had, or you might be going into your A races. If you're a cross racer, good luck with that. Hit up Josh with questions because he is the cross guru at Evoke Bike. So thanks for sticking around. See ya.